Now, how old are you? 23. Did you have a license? Um, no. Why were you driving? Because I needed to get home. Yeah, but why didn't you have a license? Um, what, had it been suspended? Or? Yes, they're suspended. Oh, and how did it get suspended? Um... You want me to look it up or you want to be honest? Sure. Nah, I don't want to look it up. Tell me the truth. This is the plaintiff, Walter Kapakowski III. He says he towed a crashed car at the police department's request, and the defendant refuses to pay for the tow and the storage fees, and she hasn't picked up the car yet. She's a mean, vile woman who owes him $3,672.20, and he's happy to have his day in court and to be suing her. This is the defendant, Lucinda Hamilton. She says the plaintiff waited all week to inform her he had her car. She told him to junk the thing. For some reason, he didn't. Now, he wants almost four grand in storage fees? <laughs> nice try, buddy. Bottom line, he's a scammer, trying to rack up huge storage fees, and she owes nothing. She's accused of being irresponsible. All parties, please use your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. Man. Okay, we're going to do something a little unusual here because we normally start with the side that brought the lawsuit, but I want to talk to you. What is your name? Cache Hamilton. Okay, Cache. Mm -hmm. And it all started with you, correct? <laughs> what happened that it was? When did this happen? At night, 6 a.m.? Um, yes, I believe so. Really early. So, what were you, mm -hmm. do? you were coming home from somewhere? Yes. So, you've been out all night? Somewhat. I was just coming from a family member's house. Okay, but you hadn't been to sleep is, I guess, what I mean. Oh, yes. Right, okay. So you're driving, and what happens? Um, someone hit me and kept going, so I ended up crashing into another car. You crash into a parked car that then crashed into the parked car in front of it, or several cars were affected, right? Um, just one. No, two. Was it? The car yeah, had. there were a couple. <clears throat> okay. Two. Anyway, so okay, what nice. happens? You call the police? What happened? Um, the, the people who came out the house can't call the police and just sat there and waited till they came in. Okay. Now, how old are you? 23. Did you have a license? Um, no. Why were you driving? Because I needed to get home. Yeah, but why didn't you have a license? Um, what, had it been suspended? Or? Yes, they're suspended. Oh, and how did it get suspended? Um, you want me to look it up or you want to be honest? Sure. Nah, I don't want to look it up. Then. Tell me the truth. I don't even. You don't remember how your license got suspended originally? I think it was the speeding ticket that I didn't pay for, and then it just okay. adds up. <laughs> um, so did you know she had a suspended license? No. The car is registered in your name. I know you think it isn't, but it is, because we just checked it. So the car is registered in your name. It's registered in my name. Yeah, you f and that's how he knew where to write you when it got towed, pursuant to the police order. Now, as it turned out, cachet, you also had warrants out for you. Mm -hmm. For what? Not showing up to court? Um, for not taking um, drug and alcohol class, but I uh -huh. didn't know I had a warrant at the time. Right, but you knew you had to take the drug and alcohol class. Right. And you knew you didn't take the drug and alcohol class. Right. So what did you think was gonna happen? That it was all gonna evaporate? So you should have expected that you had warrants. Did you know that she was supposed to do some drug and alcohol thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. And did you know she wasn't doing it? No, she didn't have the money to take the course. Then you go back to the court yeah. and you try to figure something out. You don't just ignore the court, right? Yeah. Correct. Right, because then we have these problems, right? So she ended up, they ended up arresting her. Correct. And how long did she spend in jail? Um, I bonded her out the next day. Okay. That's why, you know, you go back to the court and you say, I have a problem, this is my problem, whatever. But if you knew all that, why is your 99 what? Is a 99 what? Century Buick. In her hands. Uh, she was using it to go to work. No, I... T <laughs> she wasn't supposed to be um, out late night like that. Right. It was just for her to get back and forth to work. Does she live with you or no? Yes. Okay. Yep. 
Okay, so now you get called by the police because you're on the police roster of people to call when there is a police matter, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And you tow the car. We towed the car yeah, back to our facility. Right. We waited approximately a week. We didn't hear anything. Normally somebody would try to contact us to get their contents. We didn't hear anything after a week. Then we looked at the police report and notified the mother that okay. her, it's in her name. And we right. asked her what she wants to do with the car. We explained the bill. At the time was $571. And the reason the bill is, is we have a, a contract with the police departments that we have to fill out every year with our pricing, with our storage, with our cleanup, with, and it has to go through the police department and be okayed. You know, all the tow companies have to be on the same level. Meaning that your rate is set by the government. Set by the police departments. And okay. This, so the let state. me ask you this: What happens when you, you so you pick up the phone and you call? At this after we waited a week, we got her number off the police report. Then we placed a call to her. Did you ever send a certified letter? Yes, we did. When do you send the certified letter? I have it right here. We have a copy of it. The certified letter we sent that was returned, as well as we have a letter that we wrote. It wasn't open, but that's the letter that's that we wrote. That's a copy of what's in the certified letter. All right, so you call her on what day? Seven, how many days later? October 18th. Yeah, the 18th we called. Okay, so that's a few days before the certified letter. And we sent the letter out just to make sure that show info, you know, that we had tried to contact her. Right, okay, and then what happens? The letter came back. Unclaimed. Uh, unclaimed. We still have... We, we checked to see if there was any insurance on it to try to notify the insurance company. Our hands are tied. There's only liabil or, yeah, liability insurance on it. So then our hands are kind of tied. We tried what to did get she tell you on the phone? Pretty much. I don't want it. It's I don't 99. have no money. I don't want it. It's old it. enough to it's, vote. I, file, I can't I'm, pay that. I'm filing bankruptcy. You can keep it. You're a scam. I didn't call you. The police department called you. I'm not paying for it if I didn't call okay, you. Okay, she, she just looked shocked when you said that. Of course, she, she could be feigning shock. But did you tell me it was a scam? No. According to you, you had looked her up on Facebook. Yes, ma'am. Why? Just curious. I mean, that's that, a public thing. You have every right to. I'm just curious. That usually tells me a lot of things on people. It's social media. Sometimes people brag. Sometimes people brag, well, hey, I got a DUI last night. And, ha, ha, look at this. Or he took my car and, and he's a scam. Or they write stuff. Right. I looked it up to see. And I, I try to work with people. You know, I try to, if, if she would have been honest to come in the next day and said, look, my daughter was in some trouble. Can we work something out? Can we sign a title over? I'll do that get your contents out, I can dispose of the car. I can't dispose of that car right now because I have to hold it in my possession because I, I don't have a title. Yeah, but you can dispose of the car because after it's abandoned for 30 days, you can dispose of the car. You the, and I both know the that. Police, she may not know that, but I know that. The police department make me wait 30 days before I right, can Right, 30 days, but you're suing for 90 days, 91 days. I still have it in my possession. Well, yeah, I know because you didn't get rid of it in 30 days like you could have, right? We normally wait yeah. 90, we work for five. I don't care if you wait right. two years. Right. You can't sue for the two years if you could have gotten out of your own way on day 30, right? We, we've had people come in after 30 days. I don't care. They right. don't have a right to it after 30. You're, you you're, can just junk it, you can do whatever you want. It right. can be out of your hair and you don't have to store it after 30. Right. Okay, so what did you think was gonna happen? That you, you know, this is all a big problem that is of your daughter's creation and that you were just going to say, ah, uh, you know. No. This, this well, is, you didn't go pick up your car. I mean, no, you know. Correct. Did you not know where your car was? No, I didn't. All know. you have to do to know is call the police because they'll tell you. No, it's supposed to be at Jim's auto. I, no, 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 no. You don't get to pick where it goes when your daughter's arrested for a crime. The cops pick where it goes. They say, because it could be evidence in the crime. You know, for one thing, I saw the police report. I know they think she lied to the police about how the accident happened. I was out there. Because, we, say it again. I was out there. Right. They, so they called me from work. Do you know that the police think she lied to them? Because that alone is, is a crime. Yes. Separate from the other stuff that she didn't do. You're, okay. So the police pick him. They don't, you know, they're not, I mean, it'd be nice if you could direct not. where it goes. But what made you think that you were going to direct where it goes? Did you talk to them that night? No. I only right. talked to the officer that was there. Right. He asked him, um, I said, I would like it to be told to Jim's auto because they, I don't have a title to this car. Okay. And Physically, you don't have a title. Correct. Right. Because I did a car title on, I said, I do not have a car title on to it. So okay, if, I don't know what you just said. 
you did a car title. What does that mean? I did a car title loan on Meaning, it back in. Do you mean you did a search? No. What do you mean? I got a loan out and they took my title to my car. I did oh, a car so title. you physically don't have a title. Okay. Correct. And I, at the time when I picked the car up, I gave her a business card. Oh, you did? I wasn't, at the scene. I wasn't there. Because she even stated when she called, when we talked to her you, a week later. I mean, either way, it doesn't even matter to me because the truth of the matter is- Yeah, because I wasn't even there. I was just at, a second, back at ma'am, work. Ma'am, listen to me. It behooves you to figure out what happened with your car. And all you got to do, it's all a matter of police <laughs> record, is find out. But what you can't do is just leave it there and not think there's going to be Correct. a consequence. You didn't go there because you didn't want to pay the tow fee. You didn't want the car. It's a, pe you know, it's a hoopty that you were just sick of. I asked her um, when they called me a week later, I was like, who is this? And it was the lady first. Well, let me ask you a question. When the car doesn't surface at your home or hers, do, do you, do, uh, well, actually, you live together. Did you not say to her, where's the car? Like, well, you were there that night, so you know the police towed it. No. My cousin called me and said, your car is over here wrecked. I think this is your car. Yeah. So I got with my boss. Me, I, I know, but husband. you're telling me things I'm not interested yeah, in. What I'm left. saying is you knew your car got towed by the police. Yeah, we went so out there. So you know where it is. No, I left then, before it got towed. He, he told me I could get all the stuff out. I got all the stuff out, and he got my insurance, and I said, is um, everything okay? You know, we can go. And we left and went back to work. Okay, what did you think was going to happen with a chunk of steel that was in the middle of the road? Well, I knew that they was towing it because we tried right. to, and I tried to drive it. Right, who do you think is going to have to pay for it? Yeah, I was trying to uh, drive my car and the other guy was like, can we just, can I just leave my car here? And he was like, no, because it's leaking. We can't leave the cars out here. Of course so not. So they had to be towed. Right. But, so then, so, And I'm figuring my car stop talking and is at Jim's Auto. No, right. Here's the Until problem that you have. It's your car causing Correct. a problem thanks to your daughter. Correct. Right. So how is it going to be that that guy won't get paid for his services? How is that, and what planet is that fair, that that guy does a service that you're supposed to pay for and nobody pays him? The police don't pay for a tow when you have a car you're not supposed to be using because your license is suspended and your mother didn't <laughs> authorize it and you bash into a bunch of cars when you're coming home from partying. No, the government isn't going to pay for that tow. You are. So when you say, ah, I don't have any money and I'm not going to pay for it or whatever, blah, 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 and you just wash your hands of the problem, what no. do you think is going to happen? No, I tried to pay them. How did you try to pay them? She was on the phone first, and I told her I didn't know it was there, so she put the guy on. He gets on, and he was like, you work at Ford. I need my $500. I you said, what? Say he, it again. You he work said, at I work Ford. at Ford. Oh, so that's why you were looking up to see if she had a job. And I said, no, I don't work at Ford. I work for Venture. He was like, well, y'all making a bunch of money. You working a bunch of overtime. So we was arguing back and forth. So I, I hung up. I don't even see how that matters, but go So ahead. then I called back and I spoke to her and I said, well, I got 250 Can I do payment plans? I said, I only got 250 She said, no. She said, unfortunately, you got to have the full amount. I said, well, I don't have the full $500. That's when I had told him, I said, I just filed bankruptcy and I don't have the full $500. But I was willing. I told him I had 250 and I could pay payments and I could have somebody come and pick it up. But they said I couldn't do it. So there was nothing else. I, I didn't have the money for it. Okay. You know, I hear you. And I'm not unsympathetic to what you're saying. If you don't have the money, you don't have the money. But sometimes a small problem becomes a big problem because we don't take out a loan to pay it or use a credit card. Um, and then you'd have the money maybe 30 days later. You'd give yourself time to have the money. Your problems are not his problems. Um, he gets paid. And but he doesn't get paid what he's suing for here today because you, of course, could have solved your storage problems by getting rid of it after the 30 days. It's an abandoned vehicle from 1999. I am ordering you to pay him the tow and the cleanup, and I'm ordering you to pay him, uh, which is what you would have paid if you'd gone to pick it up that night. That's only $255. But it turned into a much bigger problem because you left it there for the 30 days, and now there's an additional $955.55 in storage fees for a sum total of $1,210.50 for a car that's not even worth that because you ignored the problem, okay? Yeah. That's my verdict, Can I plus your court costs. What do we do with the car? Get rid of it. Okay. It's over the 30 <laughs> days, I vote, you know, but you know that. I don't even need to say that, you know that. So the plaintiffs prevail, they get over $1,200, and you have lost the car. Yep. And you're smiling. Why? Hey, it is what it is. That's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah, that's tough. Are you mad at her? No. 
You should be. No. Why? No. Why aren't you mad? Driving your car? Getting a wreck with it? Yeah. That's her child. Things happen. Pardon? I'm her daughter. Things happen. Yeah, I know. But she could be upset I'm with you. Yeah. But I was at the time it happened. No, that I'm was sure three months are. ago. Yeah. Cost you a car. Yeah. Good luck to you. Thank okay. You. All right. Here comes the plaintiff now. Boy, you were suing for thirty six hundred dollars. You get twelve hundred and ten dollars. That's better than nothing. Yeah. Well, you learned something though. Jeez, yes, get did. rid of these junkers. Yes, I am. After thirty days, goodbye. Yep. Right. Goodbye. Yep. Thank okay. you. Okay. Goodbye. It's been great. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Harvey. So, if your car gets towed, you got to understand this. You have to pick it up quickly. Deal with it because these storage costs mount. And if you wait, if you delay, if you just hope it goes away, it won't. And the storage costs will become insane. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, David Womack. He says he dropped off some clothes at the defendant's dry cleaners and mistakenly left some jewelry in the pocket. When he called the defendant to see if she found his belongings, she told him yes and said it was locked up in the safe. When he went to retrieve his jewelry, she then told him she gave his stuff to another customer because she felt bad for him. Huh? He's suing for $1,899, the value of his missing jewelry. This is the defendant, Cindy Orton. She says she found some jewelry on the floor of a store one day and had no idea whose it was. She put it on a front counter, figuring the owner would come looking for it, but no one did. She ended up giving it to another customer who just lost his mother. Bottom line, she found the stuff on the floor and no one called about it or claimed it as theirs. She's accused of giving it all away. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says he lost some jewelry at the defendant's cleaners and says she gave it away before he had a chance to come and pick session. it up. But the defendant says she held on to the it but Judge gave Barrow it away to another side. customer who had just lost their mother. Order, it's the case of really being taken to the cleaners. Morning, Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Womack. Yes. December 31st, about to start off a new year. And how do we start off our new year? You go uh, to the cleaners, yeah. you take five pairs of pants and a sweatsuit. And according to you, you left almost $2,000 worth of jewelry inside of it. Right, in my sweatsuit pants. Okay, what did you have inside your sweatsuit pants that I you did a, not remember and did not take out? A 10 carat uh, Cuban link bracelet. A 10 carat yes. Cuban link bracelet. bracelet. A 10 carat uh, Figaro. What's a 10 carat? I know what a Cuban link bracelet is. What is a 10 carat uh, Figaro chain? What does necklace. That look like? It's a Figaro uh, necklace. Um, What's it look like? Do you have pictures? Got loops. Yes. Is that one a necklace? Yes. Right. And uh, a solid gold nugget charm. And here, here, also, here's the uh, bracelet. Uh, when were these pictures taken? Oh, well, the... Do you have the, these on your cell phone? No. They're on my uh, wife's cell phone. Okay. When do you realize what you did? Uh, I realized it that Saturday evening. When did you... When, when had you been there? Oh, I went back to the cleaners. Wait, stop. December 31st was on a Tuesday, right? Or right, Wednesday? Tuesday. Right. So on the Saturday after that Tuesday, you go back to the cleaners and what happens? No, no, no. I went back on the Monday. The Saturday. Oh, and you realize it on Saturday. Did you call? No, I didn't realize where it was. Okay. What'd you say about Saturday? I was looking for my jewelry because I wanted to wear it, but I okay. couldn't find it. Okay. And so Saturday and Sunday, I was looking for it. So Monday... I had to go. And get you didn't remember that you had it in the pants? No. All right, go on. So was it in the pants or in the jacket of the sweatsuit? It was in the pants of the sweatsuit. Okay, go on. So it's Saturday night, you know it's missing, and you still can't connect the dots that you put it in your pocket. By the way, I'm going to make sure to take a copy of this trial to my husband, who, after all these years, still will 
put stuff in his pocket and be stunned that he lost it. <laughs> Just stunned. He'll take his license after TSA, he'll put it in his pocket, say, it's fine. No, it's not fine. You are constantly losing things out of your pocket. You shouldn't put stuff in your pocket. It's an open vessel, right? <laughs> okay, so go on. Okay, so the Monday I went back to the cleaners to get my clothes. Yeah. I asked the young lady behind the counter, did they find any gold in my clothes? She said, yes. Okay, now is so, that young lady here or no? No. Okay, so go on. So she said, yes, it's, it was right here on the counter. So, on the counter? Yeah, she okay. said it was on the counter. And so she didn't see it on the counter, so she started looking around the shop for it. She couldn't find it, so then she called Miss Horton. Okay, Miss Horton told her to tell me that she had it in the safe and for me to come back the next morning at 8 o'clock. So I came back the next morning at eight, around 8, and 9 o'clock to get my gold. She tell me, oh, I'm sorry. I gave your jewelry away. Okay, and let's she, back up a second. Who finds the jewelry and where? I did. <clears throat> when I came into work Wednesday, it was on the ground. And what jewelry did you find? It was a bracelet and a necklace. Okay. But I'm not. And did the necklace have a uh, gold nugget charm on it? You don't remember? I'm okay. not sure. So when you found it, what did you do with it? I picked it up and I stuck it up on the counter. Why on the counter? Isn't that like likely to get stolen there? Um, because I just assumed that if it was of any value, the person would come back and claim it. How quickly? Obviously, the person lost it. I mean, it might take a bit for the person True. to come back and claim well, it. Well, so what'd you do? I stuck it underneath. I have a monitor on my counter. Underneath the monitor, the base. I stuck it on the base. Okay. And it sat there for a while. What's a while? Um, till I think Saturday. That's not a while. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's four days. And what'd you do with it on Saturday? A gentleman came in and I, I had no idea whose it was or if it was even real and was talking to me about how he just lost his mother and his mother had given him stuff, a bracelet like this and he can't find it. And we just were talking about how sentimental things are. So I gave it to him. Cause you felt bad for the guy? because I felt bad for the guy because I know what it's like to lose your mom. The problem is you didn't reach into your pocket to give him something that was yours. The problem is you reached onto the counter to give him something that you found. Well, he had pointed it out. I think in hindsight, I think he knew what he was looking at yeah, and I didn't. And then- Did you ever call the police to say, hey, there's some jewelry here. I don't know if it's a, but you know, I, I'd like to turn it in. No, I don't. Do you have a safe in the place? No, I don't have a safe. That was never. Um, wouldn't it have been a much better idea to just stick it in a drawer for a month? Yes. Now, with this, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's the gentleman with you? This is my son. Okay. Do you know anything or are you here for moral support? A little bit of both. Um, I'm familiar with the process. i am worked with her for years. So I... Um, I know that we find things in pockets. Um, if, if, it's, if we find it in a pocket, we t attach it to their ticket, comes back with the rest of the clothes. And where did you find this, on the floor? Um, I did not find it. Where did you find this, on the floor? I found it on the floor. Okay. But we have video footage of him checking his own pockets. Okay. In fact, the video footage shows even more than that, it doesn't does. it? Which you yes. didn't even realize until you looked at it this Today. morning here. Yes, ma'am. Oh, this is so good. Watch this. Watch closely. That's you looking through your pockets. Whoops, there it is. Something just fell out of your pocket. Did you see it? Come on, come close, come close. Go to, did you see it or you want to get closer and see it again? I've seen it. You saw it, right? So she's right that it was on the floor. They didn't steal your stuff from your pocket. No, I never seen anybody stolen. Well, you said that you'd left it in the, in the pocket and that they should have called you and, you know. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. You're actually looking, you're doing what you're supposed to do which is looking through the pockets, and then it's just one of those things it's that falls out like that. Now, the question really becomes, let me explain to you. Do you have 
as someone who finds something, an obligation of any kind legally to hold it for the person. If you have no obligation, not what should you have done. We all know what you should have okay. done. Everybody within the sound of my voice knows that it was ridiculous what you did. What you should have done is kept it for a significant period of time, maybe 30 days. Why? Because people realize when they've lost it, oh, maybe it's at the cleaners and they come later. So of course, in retrospect, that's what you should have done. The question is, do you have a legal obligation? Does the law put on you an obligation to safeguard or do anything with something you found? Or if you find it, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, and it's yours to distribute to whoever you want. That's the legal question in front of me. You have a legal obligation to safeguard it. In fact, your legal obligation in the state of Florida, just like in a, a lot of other states, is that you're supposed to call the police and say, hey, I found this, and give it to the police. Let them worry about it. And then when the person comes, say, hey, I gave it to the police. Here's the police case number. I found that out after the fact. Right. I understand. You're not a bad person. You're actually, you were trying to be a good person to somebody else who I think took you for a chump. But that's neither here nor there. Um, now, he was, and, and the reason that I feel like he doesn't trust you is because he says that you told her to tell him that it was in the safe. Did you ever tell her to tell him it was in the safe? No, ma'am. I told her. Do you even have a safe? No. Okay. I told her to tell him to come back the next morning and talk to me because I knew what I had done. Right. And that I was going to try to get a hold of the gentleman that I gave it to, to get it back. Oh, how'd that work out? Well, I didn't have his number. And then, has he ever come back in? He came back in once, and I told him everything, and he, he said that he was gonna get it back and bring it back, but he never did. Why didn't you just get his name and number and give it to I him? I did, but it was the wrong number. Oh. Oh, he kinda sounds cagey now, right? Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about value. How is it you're gonna to prove to me what that stuff's worth? You're calling everything solid gold. Do you have the receipts for them from when you got them? Yes. Oh, lordy, lordy. I have the replacement cost for the necklace from the original uh, seller. And uh, he determined that by the weight of the necklace, which was 20.4 grams on that receipt right there. And, um, the nugget, the best I could do was a uh, something similar to it I got offline, and I don't have the picture. Okay, I got you. All right, you know, um, if things happen exactly as you said, and I kind of think they did, um, I just feel bad for you because this is a very expensive lesson to learn, but lesson learned, right? You have an obligation to humanity when you find their stuff to just turn it over to the police. It's not yours to give away. I'm finding in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of the $1,899. Good luck, everybody. Well, the plaintiff prevails and the defendant, I think, has learned a lesson. <laughs> Ms. Horton, what are you thinking? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. shocked? I'm super surprised. I, I learned my lesson, I guess. That's what I said. You <laughs> learned your lesson. I learned right. a, lot, a hard one. Yeah, an expensive one. All an right. Somebody one. else loses some jewelry. You'll know what to do. Oh, okay. I'll give, I'll call I can't believe you gave it away to somebody, you know, just out of the blue like that. But anyway. Okay. Good enough. Thank you very much. You must sign some documents on your way out of the court. Mr. Womack, congratulations. Thank you. You know what you did that was really good? You had enough evidence to prove to the judge the value of what you lost. Yes. That's good. You did your work homework. Yes, sir. Okay. You're not very talkative. Right. No, nah, well, <laughs> I mean, it was kind of my fault because yeah. I just saw it on the video and I was shocked when I saw the video. Um, it fell right out of my pockets. Yeah. Right? So it was kind of my fault, too. So I bet you won't leave any jewelry in your pockets the next time you go to dry cleaner, will you? No. I'm sure of that. Thank you very much. Right, you won and you also learned a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Harvey? Well, you should know, if you find something and you know it belongs to somebody else, there ain't no such thing as finders keepers in a situation like that. That'll do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Loria Washington Robinson. She says she hired the defendants to clean her couch and carpet. And when they arrived at her house, they backed their big old truck right into her fence, knocking it down. 
that if Ennin sent her a check for a hundred bucks, she didn't even cash it because the cost to fix her fence is two thousand five hundred dollars, and she's here suing them for exactly that today. These are the defendants, Bob Lewis and Isaiah Rosier. Bob admits one of their guys backed into one fence post on the plaintiff's property, but the woman's making a federal case out of it and trying to gouge them out of $2,500. The fence is 30 years old. The post was rotted to begin with, and the plaintiff should be ashamed of herself for suing them for $2,500 when they already paid her for the cruddy post. They're accused of a fence fiasco. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant who owns a rug cleaning company had a driver who hit her fence, damaging it. But the defendant says the fence was rotten. He offered her a hundred bucks and she should be happy. It's the case of, please fence me in. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome in. Okay, so you hired them to come and fix what? To steam clean my rug and my sofa. Had you used them before? Yes, I've been All using right. them for about 15 years. And uh, they came, they did it, and what happened? When they came, um, the gentleman backed over my fence. We were screaming to tell him that he was backing, about to back over this the fence. This is when they came? Yes. Okay. And um, he proceeded to back over the fence. We talked afterwards. He promised that he would repair the fence. Who's the person who backed into the fence? A uh, truck driver that was hired. Is that person here? Uh, no. no, he's okay. no longer. Important. So go on. And um, he wanted me to not call the boss, and I said I wouldn't, but after he left, I did call the boss. And of course he did. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's what happened. Backed All right, do you have pictures of the damage? Yes. Okay, what am I, I don't want to see this collage. I want to see the actual pictures oh, one by one. Is that possible? You are there on, um, oh my goodness. That just makes it a lot smaller for me to look at. Okay, do you have actual pictures in your hand? Excellent. Well, yeah, but at least I can see okay. those separately. Yes. Nope, nope, they're the that's same exact thing. Aw, <laughs> uh, sorry. No, Not that's all right. Do you have them in your phone separately? No, but this kind of gives you a better picture. Uh, do you understand that you've essentially brought me a picture that's this big to look at? I <laughs> yes. don't want that. I want to see what happened. This might be a better pic. Okay. And that's also a picture of the driver that came over unannounced to fix the fence. I still don't know what I'm looking at. Uh, do you have a picture of your fence? Yeah, on my phone somewhere. That's great. Okay. Get it. Okay. If I go like this, this is your fence, correct? Yes. All right, is that bent one there, the one that he hit? No, it's the front of the house. Okay, how old is this fence? Uh, probably about 20 years old. Okay, so that's there the front is. of the house. There it is, yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at what used to be connected to a post that got hit. Right, that okay. I propped up. <laughs> okay, so why didn't you just take care of this? What's the big deal? Uh, we did uh, send her a check for one hundred dollars. We yeah, no, that's washing your hands of no, it. We, I mean, why didn't you actually take care we, of it? We temporarily propped up the uh, rails for her, and we were searching for a replacement post. It is twelve by twelve. She she was aware of that. That you know, she was also looking for one as well. And we still when planned on too much trouble. Uh, no, we had uh, you know one of our owners. Um, friends who's in the woodworking business looking for that post for us. We and, just then, had, and then it became too much trouble. You just wrote her a check for a hundred bucks, which she didn't cash because no. she wanted you to fix it. She didn't want right. for it to be her problem. Right. And we're still willing to do that. That's Well, you're still willing to do that, but this happened in June. We're now like eight months later and your willingness is not impressive because you haven't done it. I mean, I, you know, what is the reason that you guys didn't just fix the lady's fence? You can't find a piece of wood 12 by 12 anywhere to have it look the same as the, you know, the piece that was there, we're trying to find the same look. I mean, it, it's split, it's, Well, eventually you know, it's gonna weather the right, the right color. Correct, um, and, and it's painted gray. I mean, it could obviously is be Is it paint painted? Yes. Well, then what was the, well, then I don't understand. I thought you were trying to find a the, piece of wood that was just yeah, the well, right the, weather. the same, yeah, the same type of wood. I mean, I, I've got, you know, My friend, closer. why didn't, in eight months, why haven't you been able to do that? 
I... Because it's much easier to just write the lady a check and say, yeah, we're done. No, that's, now right. you've put the problem on her. So you didn't cash a hundred dollar check because you don't want the problem. You want right. it fixed. Exactly. So now, what have you come? You've come with a, this is like a ponderosa, <laughs> right? Yes, That's what it you is. called it. You said it's like a bonanza fence, <laughs> and I'm like, mm -hmm. I remember. Uh, so you want twenty five hundred dollars for your twenty year old fence? Yeah. Because yeah. we can't replace it. I've talked to many people. Why not? Because they'd have to recreate the. Um, post. Of and course you can replace it. And then eventually in a couple months, it'll weather to the same color or whatever. I don't know if it's painted or not. No, I treat it every year. It's yeah. Treated. So, you know. Yeah. So, um, why can't it be replaced? That's silly. I really wanted the original fence replaced, but now I was, well, I was he even, can't pretend he can't, he doesn't have a time machine, so he can't travel back to the moment where, you know, he didn't hit your thing. Right. So it's got to be replaced with a piece of wood. Right. So why would I order them to pay you $2,500? Because you can't replace it. It won't fit. It has to be, the post has to be like the original so that the rest the of the- The earth is still making wood, right? <laughs> Everybody, like we're still, wood is not, we have not depleted our earth's source of wood. Right? Okay, go on. But it's so difficult to find somebody that would actually do that. So I found Yeah, that's why they cut you a check. Because they don't <laughs> I, feel like ha the hassle. Right? I found a solar fence that would be okay in the a front what? of the house. A solar fence. What's a solar fence? It's um, got the lights that are um, activated by the sun and all that stuff. But, but that's I, not what you have. I know, but I've been willing to comp compromise and get that <laughs> fence. <laughs> and wait, that solar fence you're talking about yeah. isn't what they damaged. Is that what's We're going to have to replace it. Or so we're you leave want it. a 2,500 solar fence to replace a 20 year old piece of wood? We're going to have to do something. Okay. So that was what I came up with. I went online and that's what I looked at and that's what I liked. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have a suggestion. Yeah, I do. I do. I have a suggestion. I'm going to order them to pay you. And I'm going to order them to pay you but good mm. so that you can find somebody to fix that, which is just, you know, a piece of wood that may not be the same color at first, but it'll eventually and pretty quickly weather to the right color and or if you're treating it or painting it. Was it painted? I paint it every year. Ah, so if you we paint it every year, there's not even a question. Uh, oh, for the love of all that's holy. Uh, so what I'm going to do, you may not think it's a lot for a piece of wood, but I'm going to fix, cook into the formula when I come to my total of the trouble it is to find somebody to take care of it. So I'm okay. going to order them to pay you $300, verdict for the plaintiff. Good luck, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, the defendants are on their way out of the courtroom. The judge says you owe her $300, that you gave her a $100 check. She didn't yes. I guess that check's still good, isn't it? Yes. So that means another 200 bucks for you. Mm -hmm. Do you agree you could have fixed it some way? Yes. In eight months? They wanted it to look the same. The I wood, know, so but you couldn't. can find some. There is somebody who can do it. Right. Wouldn't you agree? Somewhere, More somebody? More than likely, we had people looking for us. I would so, think so. Yes. So you really didn't try that hard? I would say... We did, but no. the people who were looking for us just didn't well, find one for all us. All right. Sorry about that. You lost the case. Yep. And now with more money, you are off the hook. Okay. Good enough. Thank you yep, very much. You must go. All right, Ms. Washington Robinson. Hi. How are you? Good. So you can't get the uh, the fancy fence with the lights on it that are solar <laughs> equipped. That's, right. That's out the window. You'll have to pay for that. I know. Okay. You I think know. you can get this done to, uh, to, to your satisfaction for 300 bucks? Absolutely not. No? No. Well, you're gonna have to try or pay more. <laughs> right, Okay, right. good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, okay. Arby? Sadly, when your property is damaged, all you get is the depreciated value at the time of the loss, not the cost of a new one.